Our speaker this morning is Atticus Short. Atticus is a four-year boarding student from Chicago, Illinois. He's a student alumni ambassador, Wendell head prefect, and president of the Student Philanthropy Council. He's also a proud member of Mr. Gettings Advisory, the proud roommate of Bates Bland, and the proud brother of Monroe Short. Atticus. Good morning. I'm going to start this chapel talk in a way I don't think I've heard in my four years of listening to chapel talks, with a pop quiz. And yes, unlike most quizzes given at Hill, this is for the faculty as well. The graduating class size at Hill this year is approximately 150. All of us graduated eighth grade before coming to Hill. Raise your hand if your eighth grade class size was fewer than 150. All right, let's have it. Fewer than 75. Fewer than 25. Now mentally sign the honor code. Congratulations, everyone has passed the quiz. I will cover the test at the end of chapel. The 20 students in my graduating class before Hill were excited on a late winter afternoon. It was a Friday. These days in Mr. Gettings' advisory, that's known as Mr. Gettings' favorite day of the week. I'd not yet met Mr. Gettings, so Friday was special to my classmates and I for a different reason. It was Basketball Friday. Nothing was more important than the game of basketball in Zim class. There was a loud boom with every step a person made as we descended the stairs to the locker room as fast as we could. In minutes, we were in the gym, divided into two teams, playing a large game of basketball. The opposing team attempted to score, and the ball ended up out of bounds. I stood behind the hoop with the basketball in my hands as I prepared to pass the ball into play. As I did so, a thought entered my mind. Would this happen again? Would I ever have another basketball Friday? Would any of my classmates? I passed the ball to a teammate on my right, and as quick as it came, the thought was gone. This past summer, I got in trouble. I spent the summer as a camp counselor at a day camp. It was about 2.15 in the afternoon, which meant the camp day was coming to an end, and I would return home after another day with the four-year-old campers. I recycled a few boxes of Lay's chips. I'm responsible for managing the entire snack inventory of the camp. I turned around to walk back towards my group. I waved hello to the five-year-old group as they passed by. As I said hello, my boss's boss, the camp director, appeared. Atticus, she exclaimed. She began to express her dissatisfaction with my work as I walked towards her. You are doing too much work, she said. This was an accusation I would hear from multiple of my fellow counselors a week. She told me to stop taking down the water slides at the end of the day. I apologized for being too productive and implied that I would strive to be less useful in the future. <laughs> she was serious too, sending me away when she caught me attempting to help take down the water slides later in the summer. It was Monday, October 19th, 2020, just after 10 o'clock in the morning. I was in the Doe Science Center just before my Spanish class. Due to our COVID scheduling, this was the first time my Spanish class met in four weeks. As we waited for our teacher to enter, my classmates and I spoke with each other. Back in a time when so much changed in the month, the topic of our conversation was the state of COVID restrictions in our hometowns. With most people having described the current restrictions back home, my classmate turned towards me. Looking at me with confidence, she asked, what are the COVID restrictions like? Back in Scotland. <laughs> Back in my hometown of Chicago, on a Friday this past August, the camp day had begun. The cool, misty morning weather had largely cleared, and the rain thankfully appeared to be a fair way out. Having spent the earlier part of the day packing and moving boxes as it was the last day of camp, it was a welcome change of pace when I stood on the new grassy field, slightly smaller than the quad, although calling it grassy this late in the summer was generous given the numerous spots where there was a low ratio of grass to dirt, but there was grass on the field. In front of me lay a long line of plastic cones, and just beyond them my opponent gathered. I prepared to face off against approximately several dozen children between the ages of 3 and 13 in a game of dodgeball. 
I lined up with a cohort of my fellow camp counselors by my side to take on this challenge. After an epic game, the young children sat down at the sideline and my fellow counselors and I stayed standing on the new field and divided ourselves into two teams. We faced off for the final dodgeball game, newer counselors versus the more experienced ones. I was on the veteran side as I had been for the past few years. It still felt a little bit strange to be on the veteran side, but I suppose if the new field became referred to as the field over seven years ago, then perhaps I should be on it. After a countdown, the fun began. On a Friday, a few years earlier, gym class ended after 40 fast minutes. I went down to the locker room and changed out of my gym clothes. I brought them back with me as I walked up the stairs into my locker. I put my gym clothes in my backpack and brought it into the classroom. I put everything I needed in my bag and stood by my desk. Our English teacher walked in, wearing a coat and carrying a clipboard with a list of our names alphabetized by last name to check us out for dismissal. We were minutes away from spring break. When we returned, it would be our final months together before graduating. Most of us had spent a decade together. There was excitement and chatter in the room. Our teacher stood at his desk and had us all quiet down. Everyone in the room knew, in order to graduate, you had to pass the Constitution test. Take your Constitution workbooks home, our teacher told us. Not because anything will happen, but just in case something does. We all did as he said, but nothing would happen, right? 725 miles to the east, I explained to my surprised classmate that I was not from Scotland. I fondly recall that memory and the many conversations I've had with more people than I can count about the manner in which I speak. When asked why I sound as if I am from Britain, having grown up in the States without British parents, I've often replied that it is simply the way I speak. While true, there is more to the story I've often left out, as historically I've not been fond of the way my words sound. As a child, when I uttered three, the number after two, it was indistinguishable from three, when something has no cost. The same was so for 13 and 14, the number after 12 and before 15, respectively. W and R, S and S8, and more, all sounded frustratingly indistinguishable. Throughout grade school, I spent numerous hours a week in speech therapy in an effort to improve my speech. For a few years, it was my largest after-school commitment by time, though not one I particularly enjoyed in the moment. Yet this childhood bother has evolved into the way I currently speak, becoming something I value today. Four years ago, my classmates and I left the classroom. We walked down one flight of stairs through the main hall. I grabbed my lunchbox off the metal cart and continued down the main hall to the building entrance. The date of this particular merch day was Friday the 13th. Although no one noticed between spring break and the nearing final months of our time together. I walked outside towards the black metal gate that separated the school from the sidewalk and street. I stood outside the fence with my classmates. Cars slowly made their way down the street as parents picked up their children and left for spring break. It was a fairly cloudy afternoon. It was 48 degrees Fahrenheit outside and felt colder with the wind. A few of my classmates started to leave. As I stood there, I thought about what our teacher had said. Nothing would really happen, right? I told myself. I looked around at my classmates and wondered, what if something does happen? Having been told earlier in the summer that I can neither throw nor catch two other important skills in dodgeball, I too was surprised when the game bounds became disregarded and my teammate was hit with a dodgeball, making me the last person on my side. I now single-handedly faced off against a dozen of my peers on the opposing team. I valiantly fought them off and remained standing for as long as I could. I navigated a maze of dodgeballs aimed at me, even managing to hit one of my opponents. As I circled around to the nearest dodgeball I could grab while a colleague rearmed with a dodgeball closed in on me, I thought about the decade and a half I had spent at camp. I thought about the fun I had playing capture the flag on the field as a camper and the smiles I have brought to campus faces as a counselor. On my yearly pediatric reports, when asked what my dream job is, for many years my response was to be a camp counselor. Only, I don't exactly see it as such. Dream, yes. 
past and present Atticus would be overjoyed by my shirt that reads camp staff. But I intentionally never called it a job at any point in this talk, even though I get paid and that money goes into a retirement account minus federal income, Medicare, Social Security, and Illinois state income taxes. While my boss, my boss's boss, my five-year-old head counselor, and at least seven more of my colleagues would personally tell me I do too much work on a weekly basis, I've never viewed it as such. I've considered it a fun, valuable experience that has highlighted my summers and is thus why I've spent every summer there for a decade and a half. When I left dismissal on Friday, March 13th, 2020, I could never have imagined that in the following days, weeks, and months, a pandemic rivaling nothing since as far back as a century before would hit society, creating unprecedented restrictions on every facet of life nor that that Friday would be the last time I would stand at dismissal with my classmates, the final time we would storm down the metal steps to Basketball Friday. Yesterday, Monday, April 15th, 2024, was the date of the advanced economics field trip to New York. The day started in the CFTA parking lot at 5.30 in the morning. The bus ride was quiet as the sun rose. It took approximately two and a half hours as predicted and we still arrived approximately one hour early for our first meeting. Mr. Baum reminded us to run out of time everywhere we went. We showed up an hour early to our first meeting and were spending the day in New York, but at the end of the day, we would be leaving New York. Thus, our presence in New York and access to extraordinary people and places was temporary. Mr. Baum explained that we needed to have infinite curiosity and focus. We had to value the time we had and get the most we could out of it. In economic terms, I'm asking each of you to maximize your utility, to personally achieve an economic profit. While well, I'm not one to count it, for the six women in the room, this is our 10th to last chapel talk. For the rest of you, you have a few more. But regardless of whether it is one chapel talk or 100 chapel talks, the number is not what matters. What matters is the forward maps of time that will progress as you jump into the waters of the Dell and beyond. The clock still ticks and shall forever continue. Though hill ties never sever, our time at hill is temporary, so we should go to chapel, pay attention in classes, engage in conversations at seated meals, meet the so many incredible people who live on the hill every day, run out of time, and make the most of our finite presence here. But I'm not giving this talk to say what to do, to provide answers. Rather, I'm here to do quite the opposite, to ask you questions. While so much lasts a finite amount of time, one thing has the permanence of the forward marching hand of time, the test. It is the test I face on the sidewalk on Basketball Friday, over my fun summers at camp, in the classrooms when asked about my voice. It is the test we all individually take. It is perhaps the most important test we will ever take. It is a test that we must answer every moment of every day for all of time. It is a test we cannot cheat on and graded by perhaps the strictest grader possible, you. It is a test that asks two questions to be thoughtfully considered. What do you value? How can you enjoy it as much as possible while you still can?